this area. Got to get this thing situated right. All right. All right, man. Fucking, Fucking big steaks and protein shakes, episode one. <laughs> so, all right, man. We've been working on this for a bit here and trying to get this together, and finally got it. We got time to do it. So, uh, let's start with. Uh, who are you? Why the fuck do you matter? Um, I don't know why I matter yet. But I'm still trying to figure that out. You know what I mean? Um, right now I am currently working towards my recently found passion and goals, which is personal training and athletic training and all that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to get into. Well, I've been, I've been always I've always lifted. I mean, since I started playing football, but. Well, wait, oh, wait touch on that, though. Football. football. What did you, you do with that? Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of athletes out there. Football, what did you do? Like, what are your accolades? Um, I played from, I think I was in sixth grade when I first started. I don't remember. Yeah, like 12. I think you were in sixth grade. I was like 12 years old. Playing with, like, kids two or three years older than me because I was so chunky. <laughs> and that's when they did by weight, not by, by age. Because yeah. people got soft. Yeah. And I was just, I would get bullied. But then... It was not an. It was not a good first year until like my last like couple weeks of practice, and I hit this kid, and my coach was like, "Oh, Angel wants to play defense," and that's like where it started, I guess. And I played linebacker and defensive end all through middle school, high school, and into college. So it was pretty cool. So you played at uh, Marana High, obviously. So I know a little bit about you because I'm dad, right? Um, so that's another dynamic we'll touch on later, but. Uh, you played here at Moran High School. Yep. So Tucson, Arizona is where we call home. Yeah. Uh, not for long. No, not for long. <laughs> uh, so, all right, you went off to play college football. How was that? It was awesome. I'm playing the fucking freezing cold. Yeah, dude. I went up and played in Minnesota, um, like north Minnesota, like two hours away from the Canadian border. Like yeah. same distance we are from Mexico, pretty much here. So literally the other side of the country, pretty much the other north side. Um, Good cold weather football. Yeah, it was. I played my hottest game ever ever up there because it it was like eighty two degrees, not bad, but the humidity made it like unbearable. Kids are passing out. I'm drenched in sweat, and you just don't dry because it's so humid out. The hottest game of my life by far. Like beats, like beats all the beats practices all the here where your cleats are melting and isn't that fucking weird? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so now you're going to be a personal trainer and that's what you're going towards. Yep. Uh, what do you specialize in? Like, what is your? You know, you got a bunch of like personal trainers who are mainly into like calisthenics, all of that. What What is your your kind of expertise? I don't know yet because I mean, obviously, like I haven't started really. Um, I guess right now, and probably what I would like to get into more, like as I am certified and start picking up my own clients, like more, because I have some clients that are in high school and some of my buddies, you know, that kind of thing, but probably like sports specific training. So like, that's what I've been, I wrote a couple for some guys that I coached actually, they graduated their one of them's undecided yet, and one of them is going up to Hastings. It's up in Wisconsin, I think, something like that. Nice. Also going up north, yeah. <laughs> and they had messaged me just asking, like, "Hey, what kind of what kind of stuff should I do before I go to school?" And I was like, "You know what? Let me let me put something together for you." So I kind of used a similar template to the one that I got sent when I was their age and before I went up to school, because their schools haven't still haven't sent them one. And yeah. yeah, I know it's weird. Our our athletic, our athletic trainer was a beast, though. Coach Tooth, this little tiny man, but gosh, he was so strong. And it's always the little coaches that are just know. fucking oh. monsters. Um, I used a similar like structure of like Excel sheets. Is what I used, or that's not where it is, huh? Yeah, it was an Excel sheet. I remember. Yeah. Um, and just kind of they put their weight in like their max weights at the top for like each lift and it kind of fills in the chart for them. Nice. It's pretty cool. Um, it takes the guessing out. Yeah. And like it helps with like keeping track because that's what I'm really bad about in the gym. Like I go to the gym and I know exactly like what I'm going to do, but I need to start writing down like how many reps, how many sets I do, how much weight I do for each thing because like I don't have anything to gauge off of last time. So like if I bench like 275 for five, 
and then next week I do the same thing. I'm not like progressing. You know what I mean? I just like I'm going off like how I feel, which is obviously like okay. Like if you're not feeling, like if you go for 275 for five and it feels heavy as hell, like cut it back a little bit if you can't get five. But like some weeks you're stronger, like you should get stronger. So it's kind of it kind of progresses as it goes on. Yeah, it kind of progresses as it goes on. Nice, nice. So where's uh where where do you currently uh put in put in the work? Oh man, I go to Beast Strong Powerhouse. I, yeah, how's that? I kind of started working there too. Um, nice. Yeah. So, it's like down the road from here, like super. I had not really heard of it. Like, I mean, it's been open for like two years now. The one up here, but there was one downtown that I had never ever heard of, and I've been here my whole life. And I found it. I don't know. It was like a flyer in Walmart, right? Oh, you found it, right? I don't remember. I don't remember. But yeah, and like, it's just an awesome atmosphere. Like, it brings you back to like those high school days where like it was just you and like the guys in there that are like have the same goals in line. And like, granted, like it's not just guys in there. Like, there's a bunch of girls. But like, you don't just go in there and find people playing on their phones. Like, the atmosphere is awesome. It has all the different like specialty bars that you need, like safety squat bars, axle bars, cambered bars. Has 55 pound bars. Like. Just for squatting, they're a little thicker too. Nice. Um, actual deadlift bars, unlike LA Fitness, where all the bars are the same. Yeah, I see that. And that's the thing. I, I, I'll be honest. I go to LA Fitness because I'm used to working out. I've been working out there for seven years. But you might convince me to go and, and get a membership over there. It has a lot of stuff for you too, because I mean, like, I know you injured yourself a long time ago with your back, and it's hard for you. I mean, you just got it started squatting again. I just can't. I can't get my arms back. Big. That's about <laughs> it, you know? You're too big. Yeah, well, I mean, no, no I mean, you know, that's the thing is that, so, like, uh, when they used to have Gold's Gym, I like that because they had a lot of different, a lot of different equipment. Mm-hmm. And I know that, you know, I did the, <clears throat> the one day when I went and worked out with you and they, they did the bring the buddy thing. Yeah. Um, I definitely like it. I mean, there's something to it where, like, LA Fitness is very commercial, yeah. you know, um, and of course you got all the guys in there that are just there to fucking pick up on chicks and like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, my opinion is do that elsewhere. Yeah. Like go hang out in front of fucking GNC. I don't know. With the old naked um, man in the sauna. That's <laughs> that. The old naked man in the sauna. Don't bother me though. Like it's whatever. Like once you get older, you're just like, fuck it. You know? Um, but no, I mean, there's, there's benefits there's drawbacks to the la fitness i mean oh yeah i mean like the one thing i miss about la fitness was the obviously like basketball court i love playing basketball but like now me and my friends just meet up at a local park and we all get together and just play ball so i mean that's fun they have like a more variety of machines um i still like our machines more just because they're they're like the old school machines they're like not brand new by any means but like there's no weights on them, some of them. So you're like kind of guessing. And you're like, I saw this guy. He was doing this last time. I could probably do it. And it's heavy as hell. And you're just like, oh, okay. And it's humbling for sure. <laughs> so they're, they're iron. They're not, uh, they're not all plastic. No. Yeah. Oh, shit, man. Cool. So personal training and uh, working at the gym. It's good shit, man. Yeah. It's, it's good shit. It's coming along. I, I'm doing my classes and... I'm having to put some time away from that to go work at the gym as well. Like besides the, my day job, but yeah. trying to get out of the day job type of thing. So, yeah, you know, that's the thing. Get out, of the, get out of the rat race, get out of the hamster wheel. Yeah. That's what I always promote. But you're on the path. Just stick to it. Yeah. Stick to it. So cool, man. What about you? I mean, I'm talking about me. Like, what are you doing? I know you you sell homes a little bit, right? I sell a little bit of homes. Uh, yeah, I'm a real estate agent. So, uh, fuck, man. I worked a lot of uh, a lot of different jobs, you know, from real young to, you know, uh, the last job I worked before real estate was fucking psych ward, man. Um, three years at the psych ward. Sometimes I felt like I was locked in there instead of getting paid to be there. Uh, that was intense. And then I uh, took my real estate classes. Um, got into real estate, not really sure. I mean, I'm a big, ugly dude. I mean, I'm not really ugly. I'm pretty. But, uh, you know, I'm a pretty intimidating looking dude. And I didn't know how it was going to go. Um, did pretty decent my first year. 
Uh, second year, did pretty well. Uh, got this fucking award that was weird to get. I still got to show you, but like... What is it? It's uh, an award for selling home warranties along with like my buyer's purchases of their home. And I'm like... I don't know, but it's weird. It's a, it's a fucking award with my name on it, and I'm just like, oh. I feel like I won a fucking Grammy or something, you know? Um, but no, I mean, it was cool. It made top 10 for my uh, brokerage for, you know, the year. And oh, wow, in your first, your second year? My second year, man. I was on a team in my first year, and then I went solo. And from there, you know, just now we're on to bigger, more, man. Like, just do more, get more deals, uh, help more people. You know, like, well, I mean, I'm sure we'll touch on it in another episode, but like, you know, it's ironic. A lot of people go into real estate because they want to make money. They want to make a lot of money. They want to make commission. Um, and they think that there's not really any work involved. And man, like, you're hustling your ass off, whether you're doing a listing, whether you're doing a buyer side. Like, you're, you're busting your ass. And sometimes things can get really chaotic and hectic and busy. Um, I think on your brother's last birthday here, I had to go hand off keys, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, shit, I got to leave right now to go hand off keys. You stuck mom with the dinner. Remember that? Uh, yeah, that was bad. That she was, was bad. happy. Yeah, well, she understands though. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, uh, but dude, like, so the, the most important thing to me is, is helping people find a home. Yeah. Like at one point in my life, and like I said, we'll probably touch on this in a different episode, but at one point, I was homeless twice in my life. So, like, for me, it's it's an important thing. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I enjoy it. And, you know, if you're in the area and you're Tucson, Arizona, or anywhere, and you're looking for a home to buy or sell and you need help, I'll be your guy. But um, I, like, I like what I do a lot. So, hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> um, other than that, all right, let's talk about let's talk about NFL playoffs. Fuck. Let's segue right into that. You know, actually, no. Word of the day, because it's gonna fucking lead into. It's gonna lead into it. So, word of the day, commitment. What does commitment mean to you? To me. My my whole outlook on it has kind of changed recently, because I, I read a book. It was called um, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Great fucking book. Yeah. And, like, I don't remember exactly what he says or if he even says anything about it at all. But I remember hearing something, whether it was in the book or just some video I saw on Instagram, but it was, like, because everybody gets, like, motivated. You know what I mean? Like, if you watch a motivational video, you might feel motivated. You know what I mean? But, like, people don't really act on like I could feel motivated right now to go for a run I probably won't you know <laughs> I don't run oh fuck cardio first yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no my cardio consists of like walking with like 30 pound chains on my neck it's like, and it hurts but no and like commitment is it's that next step up from motivation like you feel motivated and you you act on it which is Something else, Something else, which I think we'll talk on about it another time. But, like, commitment is when you find something that, like, motivates you and drives you that you act on regardless of, like, situation, how other people feel about it, and, like, anything that holds you back. Because, I mean, like, you can be committed halfway, and, like, I've been committed halfway through some things and, like, a lot of things recently, like college i failed a few classes because i was half committed i was 100 percent committed to football half committed to my grades the school part's hard to stay committed to but yeah so like true commitment is when you follow through with your motivation i think i love that so i definitely agree with you um i was one of the the, the generation that Commitment meant when you, generation that, commitment meant when you joined a team, when you signed up for something, you know, and this is the, the like, the core beginnings of, like, where the mentality came from, you know, like, no matter what, 
you don't quit until the season ended, until you know you were done. Um, yeah. Some of that I still agree with. Some of it I don't. Um, because that's where a lot of people get stuck too. Like I mean, you know, you start school to to be a fucking you know rocket scientist, and all of a sudden you discover your passion is um, marine biology. Do you stay committed um, to and some rocket people do, science? Because that's, you know what I mean? It's just who they are. Um, like they feel like... Some people, that's where they also struggle. Like they feel like yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I agree. But I, that's like where some people stay I also struggle with that. They're scared to, like, move on from something they thought they, they think they're committed to, which is halfway, you know what I mean? Well, and that's where, like, you know, for example, like, yeah. uh, we're both doing 75 hard. And commitment is a big thing. Right, because there's days where, like, I mean, I'm fucking exhausted, or I still have, you know, it's 10.30 at night, and I still have my second outdoor workout to do, and I'm like, fuck, here I go. Um, but, you know, commitment is important to me in the aspect of, you know, like you said, motivation doesn't do shit. You can, you can lose your motivation. But yeah, it's the commitment to follow through with it. That's the important part. Now, why I said commitment prior to talking about playoffs so is talk, because of the fact that. Uh, so let's talk. We're obviously both 49ers fans. And it's, it's yeah, man. Uh, but commitment. That team should have not been in the playoffs with the way it looked at the beginning of the season. I think in that locker room there was commitment to each other, to their coach, to their fucking quarterback, um, which, by the way, I just saw a few minutes ago that one of the biggest trade partners possible for Jimmy G is going to be the Jets, possibly. So that would be interesting. You know, Robert Sala went there. Uh, he knows the coach, you know, obviously a defensive coach, but... He has familiarity. That would be. Um, Broncos were another destination, but I'm really kind of hoping he goes to the Jets. Um, I'd love to see if Gary V, how how he would fucking, you know, big Jets fan, how he would appreciate that. But you know, I think in that locker room they bought in and got the commitment. You know, um, yeah. Still fucking not the way I wanted the season to end. You know, but. Uh, I'm torn. I don't know if I want to see, see I'm Stafford. Not, I'm not win very committed to Stafford because I haven't seen him play for 13 see, not, years, right? I'm That's how long? Or nine? 13 years? Like, I watched football when I was little, but, mm -hmm. like, I hadn't really started, 13 like, years. Like, watching. I, watched football when I, was little, but, like, I, I mean, every game of 49ers, but, like, watching. every other game, like, until game maybe Niners, like, my senior year, year of high school, just because I was so surrounded by, like, everything else in high school that I was so busy, you know what I mean? Like, I watch Niners games on the weekends, but never watch the Monday games, the Thursday games, but not now I do, you know? I'll just throw it on and do whatever else I'm doing. And, like, Joe Shiesty, dude, Joe Burrow. I, I hope he wins. But see, here's the thing. I don't know if I want that kid to win simply because second year in the league, like, yeah, it'll be great accolades, but, dude, he's going to win quite a few. Like, not going to lie. He, you know, I mean, and granted, the situation could always change, you know, like he got injured last year. But I think that he is going to win. Well, he's so, if he wins a Super Bowl least this year, he'll be the owner, only quarterback I mean, in history to win the Heisman, a national championship in college, and the Super Bowl. Isn't that be crazy? A national championship in college and the Super Bowl. Yeah, that would be. I don't know. I'm kind of, uh, kind of torn on on the Rams winning because I know they beat the Niners, but yeah. I kind of oh, see Stafford Super Bowl, so. win a Super Bowl. Like I mean, he gave it everything oh, as a lion. Yeah, but that's just that's so Aaron just Donald talked talking about shit about Debo, and yeah, I'm just like fuck yeah, that guy. That's just, that's just yeah, he is. but he's also no, that's beast. dramatic. He's a fucking theater actor. Like, yeah. plus he know, couldn't do shit against our fucking O line. Usually, like goddamn, even like the Cowboys O line. I'm not. Rams are pretty good, you know, like. Aaron Donald is a yeah no I mean yeah but I guarantee you if you watch tape on him like, he's fucking predictable myself off of him. don't get me wrong like I'll fully admit like I tried to like if I went up one on one against him and don't get me wrong like I'll fully admit <laughs> fucking, if I went up one on one against him he fucking bulldozed me but I'm also not an NFL football player so like I will talk shit 
Fuck you, Aaron Donald. I will talk shit, but I still honestly think he's predictable. Great player, still very strong. Great bull rush. The thing about being like that is I think Nick Bosa is also predictable, but he's just too good. Because, like, the whole thing about being a defensive line good. player is that, because, like, like it's always full go, and you have to predict, like, what the O-line is doing, which is, like, first, especially in the NFL, it's, like, first step, first read. So, like, they'll pretty much know exactly what's going on in the first, like, step or two, even. Like, high school, it's, like, maybe three steps, four steps, five steps, just as a little slower, you know, it's a different level. But at the NFL, like, Nick Bosa does, like, three things really well. He gets, he thinks he's going high, he goes low and gets under the armpit. He'll throw the shoulder, which is, like, my favorite move. Or he'll just bullish. But it's very predictable. See, but that's the thing, though, is that he is also predictable, but where... I, and see, I look at, I look at their stature, right? And as like a coach, you think Aaron Donald he's also is in the supposed middle. to fuck you he up gets a every lot single more teams go than around. Nick Bosa, which he's also most teams double team. Uh, they didn't call any holding on Nick Bosa. They didn't call any holding on Nick Bosa this last game, and I'm like, look. Because I mean, like, yeah, I mean, every single offensive true. lineman holds. That's just an offensive lineman. Right? Every single offensive line. It's a difference of oh, this. Yeah. It's just whether you get caught or not. So, yeah. true. It's a difference of this or this. Yeah. So, true. But I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Niners, I think with Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. Maybe Juwan Jennings, too. Because that kid. Well, definitely. I think those three will come back. Uh, they're probably going to sign Debo too. We still have Raheem Elijah Mitchell, Mitchell, I think he's still under contract. I have to double check, but yeah, but I don't know if they're going to bring him back. I really hope they do, but I don't know if they are going to. Um, I think as far as receivers, I mean, Debo Ayuk, and uh, Jennings are definitely. Um, this is December seventeen. Yeah, in terms of number four, he's kind of a smaller guy. He's really fast though. I can't remember his last name. Oh, Trent. Uh, no, that was 81. Trent Sherfield's number 81. I don't remember. Well, I know we got rid of that river. I can find Creek, it real quick. Creek Ross? Creek? I mean, I, he was on uh, Debo's Instagram. Uh, I think I, he was on Debo's Instagram. If it loads out here. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if we have those guys... Um, you know, Trey Lance, I'm, I'm really happy yeah. that they did not just start Trey Lance when the season was looking dismal because for as much as, you know, like you got this, uh, this guy on Twitter, I won't even say his name cause it's just, it's fucking irritating. He's a reporter for this, the, the Niners, like Bay area. And all he does is talk shit about fucking Jimmy G and it's like, dude, we don't get to the NFC championship game. Without so, Jimmy G. And granted, he I cost that, us. I don't think the Trey Super Lance Bowl. would have won those games either. So, but but I, agree I don't think. I don't think Trey Lance would have won those games. I don't think Jimmy G's a reliable quarterback. I don't think. I think. I don't think Jimmy G's. Granted, his so, thumb was hurt and his shoulder I think hurt. He, but, he takes a lot of risks. He takes a lot of risks. And that's what makes him. That's kind of what makes him dangerous, both in a good way and a bad way. Like, you know, trying to not get that sack to cost us the game, that was a risk that was badly calculated. But some of his throws are risky. And when you can't he makes make them, those throws with as a fan, you're like, yes, I mean, fuck yeah. yeah. And Iuke, and, and, and Juwan Jennings, they no, all I mean, catch Iuke is, very well. is, is they supposed to be a superstar. Catch. So, like, they definitely yeah, saved his ass a couple catch. times. So like if if Jimmy G's throwing it to an average receiver, like a dangerous throw to in triple coverage to an average receiver, like a dangerous throw that that almost always will be picked off every time. That that almost always will be picked off every time. Fair, but I mean, at the same time, I mean, it happens to every player. I mean, the look at King. look at Aaron Rodgers. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, dude. That guy is going to go down as one of the greatest, right? <laughs> greatest losers of all time. Like, right. <laughs> it's just, 
you know, like, it's sad because it's like a Dan Marino thing, right? Like, so I know Dan Marino was before your time, but, like, Dan Marino was a phenomenal quarterback. And I'm not going to lie, Aaron Rodgers is a phenomenal quarterback, but just cannot, like, you get one Super Bowl, and poor Dan Marino never got a fucking, you know, Super Bowl win, but, like, you, if you can't close the fucking game and you're Aaron Rodgers, like, ugh. Like, am I going to pay you a shit ton of money to not close the game? Like, he's not won in the playoffs against the Niners. Not when we had Alex Smith. Not when we had fucking Kaepernick. Not when we have, you know, Jimmy G. Like, it's just, I don't know. I mean, that, that Packers game was good. The Cowboys game was good. Um, I think the Packers game was a little bit better than the Cowboys game. But, um... I don't know, man. I'm so cold, but it's like... Uh, first you said you were cold, now you're fucking... I'm so cold, but it's like... Oh, Travis Benjamin. That's his name. What's up? Oh, Travis Benjamin. That's his name. Travis Benjamin, yeah. What's up? I'm just trying to see how long we've been recording for. See it on the right. 26 minutes? So what, where do you see that? See it on the right. It says, you and one other 26 minutes. You and one other 26 minutes. I don't see that. Anyways. That's funny that you can see the time on a kid. I don't know. I mean, yeah, Travis Benjamin, pretty good. Uh, better at kick returns. He's got a lot of speed. Um, I don't know. I think if we manage to keep the majority of the Niners together, um, don't lose a bunch of people to, you know, free agency or trades. Um, I think we'll do all right. I think we definitely need to, um, I think we need to keep Mostert. Um, our O-line for the most part needs to stay intact. Um, three of our O-line? Yeah. So, we'll see. I mean, it's not bad. So, we'll see. I mean... You know, obviously, yeah. football guys. So, you know, like, I mean, you look at somebody like the Bengals, they're going to be somebody that they just need, like, one or two more star players, even if they're rookies, and they're going to be fucking phenomenal. The, they do. What, the LSU players are on that team? But, like, I don't know. This is the NFL, you know. Their O-line is not clicking until, like, the second half when they click. Oh, but the problem no. Well, the problem is, is that for the most part, O line's hard because you're paying, you're paying a lot of money for non stars, and O linemen tend to play a little bit longer than most other players. So when you get somebody like like Trent Williams, right? Fucking yeah, guy's getting up there in age, but right now he's kicking ass. Like when his contract is up. If he has a phenomenal season next season as well, so I, I think he's, I forget when his contract runs out, but if he has a phenomenal season next year, how much are you going to fucking pay the man? You know? Like, you don't just let that guy walk away and be like, well, we'll find another left tackle that, you know. I mean, when he fucking runs that jet sweep, like, oh, dude, I think it's just like a fucking truck barreling down at somebody. Yeah, corner like I would be there. fucking terrified if I was that outside <laughs> backer or like the end. Yeah, like a corner. Fucking, <laughs> you used to imagine seeing big Trent Williams just run at your ass. It's terrifying. It's like fucking nightmares. Yeah, you can imagine. I don't know. We'll see. I uh, yeah, I'm excited for next season. I'm not. I don't think I'm angry just because. Still angry about this one. We definitely got further than we should have. I'm not. I don't think I'm angry just because. See, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like. See, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, uh, we were supposed to go to the Super Bowl How, last year as well. Yeah, or COVID. And all of our roster got injured. Yeah, or COVID. Or COVID, yeah. And so to say we weren't supposed to get there, I don't know. I think, I think we got where we were supposed to be with the team we had. I think that at the end, the Rams just stepped up and played better defense, and our offense played offense. Um, and I 
instead of just taking that fucking sack, Jimmy G tried to save the play and fucking goofed. I still have a lot of respect for the guy because I think through all the shit talking that everybody was doing online, I, I think he, yeah, he took it and he said, you know what? No, I think I agree. I'm going to so, do this anyways. I mean, obviously, so I like, I don't follow a whole, agree, whole lot so of other teams or, like, their like, inner group of guys that, like, how they react with each other or, like, interact with each other on the team. But, like, in the NFL, like, people get traded all the time. Like, you have friends from college that might be going to the NFL as well. Like, you're getting paid to play. So, like, the relationships are probably different than, like, your band of brothers in high school type of thing. You know what I mean? So, like... I mean, just the connection that the Niners had in their locker room so, is probably uh, different than any other team, I would imagine. Because, I mean, you don't hear about that very often. I would imagine. Yeah. No, I mean, in the NFL, because it's it's business side, like, compared to, like, college or high school, like, you know, the, the player connection and, like, the respect for each other and the coach. Yeah. Like, that doesn't get talked about as much. It's wins and losses, right? Like, you got guys like Skip Bayless that fucking just run his mouth all the time. Fucking Stephen A. Smith. Like, Stephen, Stephen's good. Uh, I think. I just don't like Stephen's theatrics. Neither can I. I just don't like Stephen's theatrics. Like, it's one thing, and I get it. You're on a show, like, you have to make it interesting, but it's like. No, I think I like it. Shut the fuck up. I I I, fuck it. I I agree with you. I cannot stand Skip, though. Can't stand that guy. Um, you know who I think needs to get out of broadcasting and get into coaching is fucking Tony Romo. Like, dude, every fucking play this year, every time we watch the game with him, I'm calling it. This is what they're going to do. They're going right, to run a jet sweep to the left. And sure as shit. And he'd even call out which player was going to block who. And I'm like... Bro, either you have, yeah. like, you, you know that conspiracy theory that the NFL scripted that's going around? Like, either he has the fucking transcript of how the game's supposed to be played, and everybody's in on it, and he's just reading what the fuck this, like, you know, like, and he just hasn't slipped up and said, oh, yeah, the uh, Niners win this one by three. <laughs> Field goal with three seconds left in the game. Like, you know, like, I mean... I think I think the man needs to get out of broadcasting and go into coaches. Like, I mean, I've, I've, heard, I've heard him call the offensive plays, but like, if you hear yeah. him break down the defense, because he says what the offense is going to do, and then he's like, "This is where the defense should be." He says what the offense is going to do, and then he's like, he like draws it on his little little yellow mark, and it's just like perfect every single time. But see, then you got to wonder with a guy with that much football IQ. Yeah. No. Was it his playing or was it the coaching? Because I mean, the man is fucking football intelligent. His career though is an entirely different story, maybe. But he had some good players too, and they had one of the probably the best offensive line for a little while. Like, so I don't know, but that, that was, I already had pre-workout. You need a fucking Zola. <laughs> I did like a quarter scoop <laughs> just to get through the workout. Like an entire yeah, work day. In the morning. I don't want to get. I don't want to stay up all night because I always do when I take pre-workout. Uh, like a full scoop. I always do. See, that's why I like these because I'll take my pre-workout in the morning and then these will get me through the day. By the way, Rock, if you want to sponsor our podcast, <laughs> drink soda, guys. I don't know. I dig it. I like the zero sugar too. But anyways. Um, Fucking Ooh. seventy-five hard. Right, man. So okay. All right, man. So seventy-five hard. So okay. Just a quick rundown. Seventy-five hard starts out with seventy-five days. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what are the rules, man? It's uh, you have to work out twice a day. One of them has to be outside. About forty-five minutes. You have to drink a gallon of water a day. Read ten pages of a. Like motivational, nonfiction, like self help type book. Something that's not like fiction or something with dragons and shit, you know? Something that's not like fiction or something with dragons and shit, you know? Yeah. No fucking romance novels. Yeah. By the way, bro, stay away from romance novels. This is the most books I've read. Some of that shit they write is fucking like weird. I know. Which is funny because you used to read a lot as a kid. 
Ten pages. What did I say? Yeah. Workout. Anyway, so the ten pages. Um, ten pages. Read ten pages. Follow a diet with no cheat meals. Um, ten pages. Ten pages. Ten pages. Follow a diet. Follow a diet. No cheat meals. No cheat meals. Oh yeah. Follow a diet. Those two count as one. No cheat meals. No alcohol. Oh yeah. Those two count as one. I think so. Yeah, because it's. I do the same shit every day, and I don't know. I don't know. Check your. It's funny. We've been doing it for so long now that it's just fucking habit. By the way, this is what it looks like when you're doing your. Yeah, follow a diet. Your days. No cheat meals or alcohol or separate. Forgot to click my oh, thing so far. Oh, that's right. Progress picture. Oh, and yeah. the progress picture. So the. Oh, that's right. yeah, take a progress picture every day. So By the way, your progress has been. I kind of. I cut back my calories. Spot last on. Week, so. I'm starting not to, really. I felt like really lean today, so that was really good. So like, my, you can actually see my definition of my legs more, because I kind of had, like, a plateau after phase one, um, or, like, the last, like, two weeks of phase one, like, halfway through, I just kind of stopped, like, with my calories, like, they stayed really consistent, so, but now I dropped them another 200 calories, and making more on projects, so, dropped, like, 34, 35 pounds so far. Nice. Yeah, I feel oh, better. I'm definitely looking a lot leaner than when you started. Yeah. I went, I mean, I, I've lost about 30, 36, I think it is, 36. Um, yep. So obviously we do the 75 days of that, right? Um, 75 days straight, no rest days. Um, and then you have to take a one month minimum. No, no, no. No, that's back to back. So yeah, phase one and 75 hard can be done back to back. I took a two-day break over the weekend. Um, felt like a lazy piece of shit for those two days. Uh, but, dude, that day 76, um, I think because mentally I accepted that I was done. You just like, I felt like I was going to die. Like my whole body just, yeah. Like, you're just like, no rest days for 75 days, and this is what it feels like. I felt um, weird, but it also was like, but you felt like antsy all day because you're not good. doing all your things. But it also was like, you felt like antsy all day because you're not doing yeah. all your things. Yeah. Yeah. But then I felt really, like, I felt really stiff too. And I think that's just because, like, I had been moving so much for 75 days straight. <laughs> and, like, all of a sudden my body was like, <laughs> all right, man, stop. Don't do anything. Um, but then so start phase one. So phase weekend. one is 30 days. Um, same stuff plus three. You have to add your own, you know, tasks to the power list. Um, so like mine was do 15 pull-ups every day, do three uh, CMAs, which are like comps on people's houses. Like this is like a business thing. Um, and then I forget the third one I had. I have it in my notes, but um, uh, so I, I those also did three pull-ups. For mine. My pull-ups were garbage. Add? I can only do like five, um, also like by myself. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I do I mean, the assistant pull-ups because like I weigh over 300 so, pounds. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, we started. Um, dang. Oh, I did 30 minutes of my like school or business every day at least, which also it always led to more, but. Like, like that was like the minimum, at least. and then I meditated, which you kind of meditate in a way. Yeah, I, I separated. Well, that's right, because you have to do the visualization no. in phase one. Oh, that's phase one. Yes. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. it. Yeah. No. So you had those three. Oh, you the phase one. You have to do the ten yeah. minute dedicated yeah. visualization yeah. and five minute cold shower. Yeah, I still do that. That's right, the cold shower. Yeah, cold showers are nice, man. If you don't do cold showers, do cold showers. They're very beneficial. And if I can look up Wim Hof Iceman on YouTube. No, man, the fucking man is a legend. Like, there's some shit. If you try his breathing, if you try his breathing, by the way, I guarantee you that if you... You're on camera, you know that, right? <laughs> I, yeah, I put on hand sanitizer earlier and my callus was cracked and it was like, fuck! Um... But the the Wim Hof breathing method, if you try that, my water. try it laying down. What are you looking for? It's behind the behind the box. Yeah. But if you try the Wim Hof breathing, you have to try it laying down. Because the first time I did it, I almost fucking passed out. But it was like, breathe like this. I started it. I was like, I cannot do that before like, bed. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> I cannot do that before bed. But 
dude, no, I, I, do it. Like, tonight, do it. I promise you, fucking worth it. Like, I love that shit. And there's so much that, like, I mean, it'll be for other episodes, but, like, man, like, visual, visualization, meditation, like, breathing techniques, all of that, like, I feel like there's, like, secrets that have been kept from mankind to fucking limit us to our stupid, yeah, like, fucking no, mass I mean, singer shows and shit like, like that. Like, the whole, like, like dude. No, I, mean, yeah. I, I can go on about that shit. The whole fucking, uh, what's, I forget what the word is, but, like, how basically society is forcing us to become something. I can't remember that word, but, like, how you eat this American diet of, like, McDonald's, Burger King, all that shit, which I have had, obviously. Which will fuck you up in the long run, which will make you take American medicines and, like, support Big Pharma and all that shit. Like, it's all fucked up, man. I hate that whole cycle. Uh, Dude, it is. We're going to have to do a whole episode on that one because that one... (laughs) We'll do an episode because if if we start going, I know both of us will go. Um, But, yeah, I agree with you. Um, What are we at? Next time we're going to set a timer. I'll edit this portion out, but we're going to set a timer. Yeah, for another episode. Um, so, okay. Yeah, for Next another episode. Talk about this, so, like okay. Obviously, now, let's talk about yeah. the other dynamic that we haven't discussed yet. Son, Obviously, I'm dad. Son. Your son. Um, I mean, in terms of that. I mean, in terms of that. You know, the dynamic between us is pretty easy. Like, we've always... Well, I no, you know, there were some rough patches there where we weren't able to really talk. Uh, but obviously that's, you know, like, life kind of course-corrected, I guess you could say. Um, I don't know. What sticks out to you? You know, I'm... Uh, okay. Without, you know. So, dad, son, stepdad. <laughs> I know, we look a lot alike. We get told this shit all the time. Um, I met you when you were seven. You're now 22. So 15 years. Obviously, there's a lot of shit that's happened in 15 years and a lot of growing and, like, you know, like you went through elementary, you went through junior high, high school, college, and now just real life. So I guess... Now that you have been, you know... As I like to call you guys, grown ass man. Um, what's been your least favorite? And I'm going to start with this. What's been your least favorite thing that either I have told you or that I was right about or that. Um, I don't know, just that least favorite part of being, like, you know, being the son and the dad comp, like, that whole complex. What's been your least favorite thing? I mean, I don't think I have a least favorite right now, because, I mean, I mean, I don't think I have a like, obviously, like, when you tell me something, like, especially during high school, I'm just like, what the fuck is he talking about, man? He doesn't really know me like that. He, He just hears that I go to practice, blah, blah, blah. But then, like... A couple months later, like a year later, the other day, I'm like, fuck, man, dad was right again. That kind of shit. Like, fuck, man, um, dad was right again. I don't know. Probably, <laughs> like, at the time when I was like, I really don't want to be hearing this right now, is like, at the time when I was like, I really don't want to be hearing this right now, is like, probably in high school, I had this ex girlfriend that, probably in high school, I had this like, ex girlfriend really sucked a lot out of me. Like, like like her time, really and just like, out of me. like didn't really like make me better. You know what I mean? I, you remember? Yeah. And like really you would always tell me like you can have your girlfriend, but make sure you have like make sure you're doing you too. And like I was like, oh, whatever I am, you know, like I'm having a good time. It's like my senior year, and just like I didn't want to hear. It. Like I heard that like every freaking week, and I was just like over it. And then like we broke up right before I went to school, and I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like every piece of advice I've given is from yeah. uh, 
yeah, from experience, man. You know, so it's been it's been interesting watching you know you, your brothers and your sister grow, get older. You know, I, I think that as a dad, you catch a lot of shit because you're usually the, the hard ass, right? Like typically in most families, like dad's the hard ass. He's the guy that's giving out punishments. He's the guy that's always having to be like. You know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but, I mean, it's funny, man. Like, I, you know, I obviously my dynamic with my dad was a little bit different. But, like, I kind of modeled, like, what I wanted to be, like, for, as a dad for you guys for what I would have wanted. You know, like, my like my dad's still alive. Like, my dad's still, you know, around. But, like, he lives in Mexico and, you know, that's a whole thing. But, um, I mean... He wasn't the type of, like, dad situation where, like, you have a daily somebody that you can talk to, that you can get advice from. You know, I was told, go to college. And, I mean, that. in all fairness, that's what my dad knew. Um, but, you know, like, it is what it is. So I just modeled what I would have wanted out of a daily dad, you know. What do you think? What do you think when you, and hopefully this is not for... At least five, six, seven, eight years, maybe. What do you think you're? What do you think you're gonna? Think? I mean, what do you aspire to be as a dad? I mean, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that a whole lot. I mean, I know I like eventually want to have kids, but. I mean, I know I like eventually want to have kids, but. I don't know. Yeah, I have to rethink that because I mean. Revisit that one. Obviously, like. I have no doubt that I'm going to be a good dad just because, I mean, Obviously, like, like, I have no doubt that I'm going to be I mean, I have you and, like, just an amazing role model, like, an amazing model of, like, how a dad should be. Obviously, like, there's things that, like, I don't agree with, but that's just, like, father son shit, like, I don't agree with, but that's just, like, I can't really think of anything right now, but, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, my ass kicked right now. Relationship with my dad, like, it has gotten a lot better. So, so like, it's good, dad. but, like, I think there's a lot, like, I could take like, away from that, good, like, relationship that, like, could really lot, mold, like, to what I aspire to be, you know what I mean? I have to think about it, because I haven't really thought about it, but, yeah. I definitely don't, I, I don't want to make my kids feel like shit. Yeah, ever, you know that know makes sense. I definitely makes don't, sense. I don't want to make my kids feel like shit. Yeah. Well, not like, I don't want to, like, I can't promise you that that's not going to happen. Because there's, like, I don't want to, like, yeah. Well, there's times where, but see, that's all perception too, man. Like, I mean, I think I realized, I mean, there's a big difference, you know, like the way that I grew up, um, some of it's perception, some of it is intentional. Um, you know, like, I mean, when, you know, like even when you were with your ex back in high school, like I tell you, you know, you can fucking be doing more. Like I did. you're wasting a lot of I time. I mean, I loved going to play like, D three football. You did. But if I, I like really put the work in, I probably could have went. Really put the work in. I could have tried to walk on D one and play linebacker because I was a good size for it. I was two twenty when I graduated. I had already lost weight. I just needed to work on my speed and I definitely work on my speed. I definitely agree. I mean, but yep. it, it all applies into where you apply yourself, you know, like, and what you do with it. Like, every, like, the, you know, I was having a conversation with your other brother, and I told him, you know, you never really fail unless you just fucking give up. Like, I mean, you can start a business, and, you know, it can, the business can close. And if you tuck your tail between your legs, and, you know, you walk away from ever trying anything again, yeah, you absolutely failed. Like, you gave up. If you go, okay, well, shit, that taught me X, Y, Z, let's start this business. I don't consider that a failure. I consider that a lesson. But, you know, but then again, like I said, perception, like, you know, uh, if you're, if you're, if you're wasting time and you get angry because I tell you you're wasting time, you know, as a kid, like. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, dad's, you know, putting no, me down. Like, I'm, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, at the time it seems yeah, like I'm putting yeah, you down. But. No, I, yeah, I no, yeah, no, I mean, though, that's where the perception no. thing steps in because you look at it differently now than you no. did back then. No. 
So. Um, yeah, but what was I gonna say? Um, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. I had a thought and it left me. I don't know. <laughs> really? I thought you always said that. That's what mom always says. Oh, wow. Must have been a lie. She started that. I get. I don't remember who she said said that type of stuff when uh, when she was younger. But she, now I always say it, which is funny. I thought that was it's still you. her line. I didn't know. I don't think I've ever heard not her paying say your royalties, that. baby. No, that was her. Yeah, that was her. She uh, she she had the line originally. I don't know who she got it from, but I'm not paying her royalties. So, so <laughs> um, all right. So, football. Back to circle. Back to another type of football here. Coaching. You had your first year coaching football this last season at Mountain View High School. Yeah. Do you know who we should get to interview at some point? Litton. Why not? I mean, why? Yeah. Why not? He just won a state, man. Dude, he's doing pretty well. He's got some. Uh, he, he just won a state, man. Yeah, he's man, got some uh, commits going to big ass schools. You know, I mean, that's that's whole journey. Ah, uh, well, yeah, he's a he's a great coach. Um, you know, I mean, in terms of, and this thing, right? Like football coaches are always going to be loved and hated for different things. Like I'm sure there are things that you absolutely fucking hate about the guy, but there's things you love about him too. Um, and football coaches will always teach you something. And, you know, like, now that you transition to being a player to a coach, oh. what type of coach are you? Are you a player coach or are you a coach coach? In your, just in your first year, because this, this can always change. So coach coach, you're more X's and O's. What's a coach coach? So coach coach, you're more X's and O's than um, relating to your players. Um, I, d I started like two weeks before the first game because and I hadn't really gotten to know them yet and it was like I was like totally thrown in and just kind of help out and then it turned into me like and just kind of help out and then it turned into me I don't really care if he ever sees this but the JV head coach was not the best at ever communicating with the players or the other coaches never really showed up to practice type of thing except for when it was offensive time because he thought he was an offensive coordinator not great. Um, um, so it kind of turned into me and the other assistant coach running the entire thing, which was like crazy. But like, I really connected with the kids really well, which was really cool. But like, after the season, like they're going up to varsity, the majority of them, and I actually got I got asked to be the defense coordinator for JV next year after my first year. Yeah, it would be cool. I'm like, I started thinking about the other day. I was like, fuck, man, like, do I have to do other shit now? I'm like, God. I'm already busy, and now I got more stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, the, but you know what, man? I promise you, and this is where a lot of our other conversations go. Like, when you have less time to bullshit at your age, and less time to go out and you know go to the bars or go to the, or just sit around and you know hang out with your friends, the more by the time you're my age. And I mean, granted, I'll fucking full of, I'm 37 years old, so it's not like I'm that much older than you, but you're going to be better off and you're going to enjoy life much more. Like I did the whole fucking go out to bars, waste my money, waste my time. And like, I look back now and I'm just like, all the shit I could have done. But I mean, like, think about it this way. You keep at it with coaching. Maybe in a year, two years, three years, you get a chance at being a head coach. Well, I mean, obviously, like, head coach for, like, JV, you probably hit that within a year or two. But, like, two, three years, you could definitely be a head coach for, I mean, for a varsity team. Somewhere. When I moved to Missouri, you know, with Emma, um, when I moved to Missouri, like, she has her jobs lined up, and, like, obviously, like, I'll be certified by then, and, like, I'll have my, I'll have to find new clients up there, but, like, I'll also be certified to like train online. So I'll also be certified to like train online. Which like I'll have my clients up there. But, like, I don't want to just do that shit from home, you know, like and I wanna work to open up my own gym. So like and even if I'm just killing time in the evenings, like 
Mo will probably be working until like 7 p.m. anyway. Mo will probably be working until like yeah. 7 p.m. I know. Shit. Nurse, she's gonna be working 12-hour shifts. Um, You're gonna have a lot of free time, buddy. Stay-at-home husband. I was telling. What do you do? Stay-at-home husband. Stay-at-home husband. What do you do? I make workouts online. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. nice. <laughs> Go home. No, I mean. Dancing like there's a bunch of high schools up there, like the area we're looking at moving. <laughs> there's a bunch there's of really a bunch good of high schools, high schools actually. Like so, I mean, if I just go up there and start fresh again, really I mean, like, I'll know I have experience and I'll tell them about the experience I have. Exactly. I mean, like, if they already well, have not established not your resume for those carries roles with that, like, I could fill, like, I'll start with it. just killing time, you know? Because, I mean, I love doing it, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, your players really yeah, seem to respect man. you from I mean, what like, I see, so it's I easy think to you'll like, do because they're like my little brother's age. It's easy to bullshit with them because they're all little kids. I'm like, they're just like, you're an old man. I'm like, dude, yeah. I could probably be drinking with you in like three years. Like, <laughs> not the JV kids, but like the varsity kids. They're calling me old. I'm like, dude, you're 18. You have three years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, in all fairness, the beard does keep you looking 22, but if you shave that shit off, you look like you're like 17. That'll do it. That'll do it. You'll never see me again with a shaved face. As it is, like, I hate that my beard doesn't grow in, like, Shit. I don't know, man. Little girls have their daddies, like, all right around their finger. Um, probably not, because... I like my face. I don't like yeah. looking like, you know, there's that filter that went around on, yeah, um, what was it, Snapchat? The no beard filter? I did one that made me look bald. I did that I'm shit? No. Like, no. I did one that made me look bald. I mean, maybe if I'm like super fit. Yeah. But like, I think just as like a heavier guy, you're just, you keep the beard. You know? Yeah, the bald one, I did that, dude. Quarantine, I did the bald thing for real. I, I, I saw the filter, and if I look like I'll the keep filter, my in here. Thank you. should be okay. I, I saw the my head's not weird shape. No, you didn't. I mean, I didn't look bad, but like, hey, the maintenance of keeping a shaved head is bullshit. <laughs> I'll have him just clean shaved. Yeah. yeah. So if, I'm not going to a fucking barber to shave my head. Like, I can do that shit at home. Like, for the price of a razor compared to going and paying the barber fucking 20 something bucks. Like, no, thank you. I'll just shave that shit at home. Get it waxed. You know? Get it waxed. But we'll see. Maybe one day. Huh? No, dude. Have you seen videos of that shit? No. That shit looks painful. And then the motherfuckers do their eyebrows, too. I don't get that. Like, I've seen videos where, like, they do it all the way down to here. And I'm like, you just took every hair off your head from here. Seen the one where they like put on a Q-tip and stick it in It's gotta be painful. Seen the one where they like put on a Q-tip and stick it in Oh yeah. Those parts. I just imagine like all that. Like I can't handle pulling that one, but then you know your eyes get all watery. Imagine doing it all at the same time. I feel like you like like re reset, like fucking reboot your head. Just. <laughs> all right, man. So episode one. Um, all right. In terms of um, your gym, Be Strong where is it at? What's it name? What's the name there's again? There's two locations in Tucson. There's one on the like east side, like southeast. It's on Camino Seco, and the one that I go to because it's closer to me and it's up on like the northwest side of Tucson. It's on Hartman, down like the Arizona Pavilions Drive off the Cortero exit. Hartman, down the Arizona Pavilions Drive off the You can just. Okay. Look at the website. It's uh, bishonpowerhouse.com, I believe. Look at the website. And then... What about contacting yeah, you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Where can they find you? Angel Instagram. Big Legs Desma, yeah, or just Angel52 with Desma. Those are my two Angel accounts. Angel accounts. One of them is my lifting account. Um, yeah, you can always message me on there, and then um, I can go sign you up or go check out the gym, give you a day pass, just whatever. Try to sign you up. Try to get people in that gym. Cool. It's pretty badass. Very cool. Is it? Yeah. I think. Uh, I think they hold a bunch of strongman competitions and powerlifting stuff. I liked it. What? I'm never going on those days. Cause like if I walk in LA Fitness, I'm one of the biggest motherfuckers there. I walk in one of those competitions, I'm gonna feel like a tiny little that, fucking guy that, that I, I don't want to feel like. That competes in it's the world Who's that strong man that was in Phoenix that competes in the world strong Shit. Um, I don't know. 
Anyway, I don't follow this close to I forget dude. his name. I don't remember, but his kid is like 10. He's probably 11 by now. The kid that, he, they both came down. The dad didn't compete, obviously, because he would smoke everybody because he competes professionally. But he, his 10-year-old competed with the adults, and the kid wears like a size 12 already, and he's gigantic. Yeah. He's going to be, so he's going to be up there. Child like, monster. Yeah. 10 years down the line, he'll be a little strong as man, probably. Trades with his dad and he just kids deadlift like three hundred pounds already. Ten, Damn. Eleven. Yeah. Kids deadlift like three hundred pounds already. Wow. That's crazy. When you listen to dad. Wow. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> when you listen to dad. That's the lesson from that. That's the takeaway. Big things happen, I guess, right? That's the lesson from that. That's the takeaway. Fucking listen to dad. You can deadlift three hundred pounds. Cool. Well, Fucking do it. It's been a great episode. Um, you guys want to read? <laughs> cool. Well. Uh, it's been a great episode. If you guys want to reach me, have any interest in the Tucson real estate market or surrounding areas, I cover Marana, Vale, all of that, um, or anywhere really in Arizona. I have a bunch of partners in the state and all over the country. So if you're looking to buy or sell real estate, uh, reach out to me. My Instagram handle is Realtor520, R-A-U-L. My name is Raul, but I do not speak good Spanish. Just warning you right now. Um, yeah, my Spanish is very shit. Uh, yeah, reach out. Um, love to talk to you. And uh, you can hit either one of us up. Uh, look forward to us having a weekly show. And uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, reach out. Send us, uh, send us a message. Send us an email. Um, we'll have all, all of our links in the show notes. Um, in terms of if you want to hear from us every week, Subscribe. I don't know. Oh, subscribe. Yeah. yeah, subscribe to the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I jump in. I jump in. You really should. It's a lot of good shit. Um, so subscribe. Then you miss a lot of good stuff. Um, so subscribe to the podcast. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, you'll hear from us next week. Good stuff. Sound good? All right, man. I don't. Well. I still gotta do my second workout. I do. I need to eat probably. And I gotta eat dinner. Twenty two hundred calories by the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had that protein shake with peanut butter and milk. So. <laughs> I still gotta finish all my water. I still have to finish about a oh, half like a gallon of water. Which is so I'm probably gonna feel like I'm gonna pee my pants tonight. I see. I left this in the, the car last night, and it like was almost frozen this morning. It was kind of nice, kind of like shocked the system because I usually don't drink cold water. But anyways, I digress. All right, man. It's been a great first episode. I think uh, next week we talk. When's the Super Bowl? It's this, this Sunday, right? No, it's next Sunday. Next Sunday. That's right. Um, so next Sunday we'll talk a little bit more about the matchup coming up for the Super Bowl. And uh, again, Subscribe. Uh, hit us up. Shoot us DMs. If you have any fitness questions, send them to that guy. Free workout plans right now. I'm not certified. I'll give you free workout plans from that monster. Um, do it. I'm stronger. I'm a little bit bigger than he is, but only because I'm dad. I got that dad strength. Um, all right, guys. Have a great Day, morning, afternoon, whenever the fuck you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah. Big steaks and protein shakes. We'll be back next week. <laughs>